Uh, hello and uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, this is my first time on YouTube and uh, see how it goes. I've been over on Twitch um, mostly, but uh, we'll see how YouTube works. Uh, so today I am just finishing a few flies that I've started. I started those over on the Twitch stream. Um, have a uh, blue doctor body where I'm going to put the wing on and uh, yeah, let's get started. Be a little bright. Ah, there we go. Just, just some things. All right. All right, so like I said, I started this uh, this body over out on um, the Twitch stream, and uh, I like Twitch. I like the tools that they have for streaming, but I just don't think it has the variety of audience that YouTube gets, and um, so yeah, so I want to try YouTube for a little bit, uh, see how that goes. Uh, I think Twitch is still thought of a lot as like a, a just for gamers, and uh, there's not a whole lot of people who are looking for, you know, making content, uh, makers and craft crafters, as Twitch would say. So, yeah. Uh, so Underwing is a pair of golden pheasant tips back to back. I have a very nice cape. Hold on one second. Be right back. Follow me on Instagram. I'm going to tie this a little bit like I tied uh, the silver doctor that I had up there recently. Uh, I kind of like that style. Um, 
definitely lends itself to flies that, you know, you're not gonna fish. The wing's a little too chunky. Looks good, so. Uh, so my tippets not quite matched. I'm gonna try to look for another one. Pretty good match. Um, this one's a little bit rougher, but it's not bad. Okay, let's. First off, to let people know I'm live on YouTube. All right. So something like that. I don't want this underwing to be too long. Um, so I think maybe here. So normally, or frequently, I should say, maybe not normally, but frequently, um, I would line this second bar here up with the butt of the fly. However, I think that's probably a little too long of an underwing on this particular fly. Um, so I think I'm gonna line up the this first bar with the tip, the tip of the, tip of the tag, so to speak. I think that's a pretty good look there. I'm just gonna pull away the extra, extra barbs on the tippets until I get to the right length. A little bit more. It doesn't have to be exact, right? It doesn't have to be perfect here.
No, for the uh, underlying, I'm just going to flatten the stems. Make sure everything is lined up. And a few errant. Okay, so I'm just going to flatten out the rachises, the uh, stems of the tippets, just a little bit so they lay flat on the thread base that we've created here. Let me tie them in a little bit long. Then I'm just going to give them a slight pull. That helps seat them just a little bit more tightly. Yeah, and that's pretty good. A little bit out of whack Okay, looking pretty good. Now, the wing is yellow and blue. Um, Probably calls for swan in the original recipe, but we're going to use dyed white turkey. Um, Cory buster or speckled buster. So these beautiful feathers. And uh, some golden pheasant on a tail, which we'll get to. Let me just put some stuff away so I'm not making a mess. Got some new stuff in from John McLean at feathersmc.com. Some of this beautiful golden yellow dyed turkey. Uh, so we'll go with this. So this is a little nicer than the uh, <laughs> rather uh, well used yellow, other yellow that I have. So. We'll go with the stuff. Um, <clears throat> and uh, marrying wings doesn't have to be vastly complicated. 
uh, I think a lot of people can spend a lot of time marrying wings and may come up with some very, very nice wings, but I don't believe you have to make a very complicated wing to make a very nice wing. Um, so one of the ways that I make less complicated wings look nicer is by interspersing pieces of speckled mustard because that just gives it that, you know, distinctive uh, look, uh, you know, without having to cut too many pieces. So, just trying to decide which piece of this yellow to use. So I'm going to make the left wing or the, the, cl the close wing um, first. So I'm going to trim this just because. Um, I'm going to make the, the close wing to me first, just so I can see what it looks like. Um, make sure it's what I want and then make the other wing or I'll, I'll change it if I don't like it. Okay. A piece of blue. So yellow and blue, and then I'm going to intersperse. I guess would be the correct, correct term. And then some couple of bars of that trim. Not going on here. of the speckled bustard. So to marry, um, it's very, you know, could be a little bit fiddly, but you just want to make sure the tips will end up. And if the material is nice and clean, uh, it'll marry quite easily. So that's one. Uh, in, in, in my opinion, uh, the, the secret to making, you know, or making married wings as painless as possible is one, to have clean materials um, and clean hands. Uh, you know, wash your hands before tying because the oils in your hands will definitely... But what they do is they mat down. So the way feathers marry together is they marry together like Velcro. And, you know, you think of one side as a hook and loop. Um, but if you have lots of oil on your hands or your, your hands are greasy, uh, you'll mat those barbs down and then they won't be able to interlock. So clean hands, clean materials uh, works every time. So... Grab a golden pheasant. 
and this isn't actually Golden Cousin. Uh, this is um, Amgold. Uh, it's a it's a hybrid between uh, Lady Amherst Pheasant and Golden Pheasant, and uh, it, it looks like Golden Pheasant uh, enough, but it's got the better uh, marrying qualities of Amherst pheasant. Um, golden pheasant is not particularly good at marrying to other materials. Uh, so having that, you know, 50% Amherst pheasant in it definitely makes it a nicer material to work with. And let's see, wrong side. Gonna trim up the buttons so they're not too in my way. All right, so this is a this is a pretty good looking wing. Uh, you can see how the uh, speckle buster adds a nice little bit of visual pop to it, um, but it's not overly complicated. Uh, this is just you know five strips of materials. Uh, the order is on from bottom to top is two fibers of Speckle Bustard, four fibers of yellow turkey, two fibers of Speckle Bustard, four fibers of um, blue, and then six fibers of golden pheasant tail or am gold tail. Yeah, and that's just long enough. This is uh, one of the reasons why I didn't want to put too much length in my underwing is um, the golden pheasant that I have, the golden pheasant tail that I have is not particularly long. So just wanted to make sure that I had enough length there. And I did. So now we have to make the other side. Blue and now speckle buster. Uh, now, if you're trying to marry kind of skinny, so like, you know, one or two barbs of something onto, you know, a chunk of something else, what you can do is you can take a larger chunk. So this is four barbs or four fibers of um, the speckled buster. You can marry the whole chunk. So all four onto the four bars of yellow. 
No, it's Herky. Let's try to little bit up. So I have all four barbs, and then I'm just going to peel away the bottom two barbs. And you can leave the two barbs of, of speckled that you want. So that can that can help. Um, and You know, and I'm not I'm not dying for efficiency. I'm not a fast flyer by any means. Uh, even when I'm tying trout flies, yeah, you know, <laughs> ten minutes a fly is that too long? Probably is. I don't care. So this is the far wing. Again, I'm going to just trim the butt ends just a little bit just so they don't get in my way while I'm tying it on. Oop. And if you're super lucky and your materials are all kind of of the same quality, uh, your wings will turn out to be the same height, same thickness. Uh, all right, so I'm just gonna gently place them over the underwing. Tie them on. Uh, now what I'm doing is I'm lifting up on the butt ends, so the butt ends here up front, and I'm pushing down at the tie-in point and kind of using my fingers to support the wing while crushing it so that it crushes evenly uh, and folds correctly, which I don't think it did. That's... weird.
You know, it's okay if you have to try a couple of times. It's natural materials. <laughs> They'll do what they want to do. And heaven help the fly tire thinks they can control them. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. I, I think I get it. Let's see what's going on. I think just uh, the furling is getting a little caught up in the hackle or something. Hey. 
looks pretty good. Uh, and you know, it takes a couple tries, it takes a couple tries. Uh, a lot of people tend to think like, you know, these slides are somehow fragile or more fragile. They're not, you can beat them up. Bind down buttons and wings just to secure them. I'm going to use a little bit of tying wax. Um, this is a traditional cobbler's wax formulation. Uh, excuse me. Um, pine pitch or pine resin beeswax. Uh, charcoal, uh, and it's nice and tacky, and it uh, will. Oop. Um, it does a nice job of uh, softening up just with body heat. So uh, the wing didn't turn out exactly like I'd imagined it, but um, I think. No, let's go wherever the materials take you. Let's up the thread. Now, I, I, a lot of people from the head of their flies would probably switch to black thread, and I would too, except this fly is gonna have a dubbed uh, mohair head. And because of that, I don't want to, I don't want the uh, black thread would show through uh, red. Um, if there's another color, like maybe dark blue, um, it would be fine. But red, uh, mohair in particular, uh, the a black thread would show through. So I am just going to stick with the white thread. Looks good. Now, at this point, um, even though this is a bilateral fly, so I'm going to tie, tie the finishing materials on both the front and the back. Um, I am going to tie everything on the side facing me first, and then I'm going to tie everything on the side facing away from me for a second, and then I'm going to finish it with, um, the crest, the topping, uh, after all that. The reason why I'm going to tie it, you know, one side, then the other is because uh, one of the best ways I've found for tying on things like, uh, you know, wood duck or some of the um, mallard, the mallard roof and the horns uh, is by reversing uh, my thread. So all that's, um, well, the duck first, and then the topping and then the horns. Um, by reversing my thread, I can get the duck to lay down a certain way a little bit easier. So here, you know, we have some really nice, really nice pair of um, barred wood duck. I'm gonna cut off a pretty good chunk for the sides. And uh, you won't be able to see this first side, but you. OK. 
Okay. And then Mallard can do the same thing. Questions. Do I actually have a carrot here? Let's just know. So I'm just trying to find a little bit of a color matched bronze mallard. It's pretty close. Question is, is this going to be long enough? Oh, yeah. So, it's bronze mallard on one side. And again, I'm going to wax the thread. Find down those tag ends a little bit more solidly. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip the thread under the end of the hook between the gut eye and the tip of the hook. I'm going to start winding back towards me. Reversing my thread, then uh, I'm going to cut out a comparable chunk of sun duck or barred wood duck. I'm going to tie it on. So, soft loop, just like that, fall into place. Okay. And, oop. Uh, it's just about perfect placement, but I'm not quite happy, so I'm going to just change that a little bit. Can't quite see.
pretty good. Now the same for the bronze mallard. Wash it out too much. Okay, bronze mallard. I want the bronze mallard to follow the curvature of the wing. So I'm gonna just kind of gently size the mallard so that it's the same length on either side. And when I want tied on, I want it to come up over the top of the wing just a little bit on either side so that it meets in the middle. So you get a nice bronze mallard roof. Check and see how that looks. Nice. Right, and again, I am going to trim the ends. Now I'm going to reverse the thread again. I'm going to tie on the topping. Uh, first again, I'm just going to clean up just ever so slightly. So I'm not making, leaving too much of a mess. Okay. Now I need a crest. Don't. Oh, I have a tin crest somewhere. The biggest thing that I want out of a good crest is a color match with the tail, uh, particularly with a fly like this. So this is an okay crest, except it's not quite the same color. I mean, the size is about perfect. But this topping is just a little bit darker. 
and no. But I do know that another tin full of crests and this one has been, this one is from the same head, same crest as the tail. And I think the humidity has gotten to these just a little bit because they're a little bit too Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good fit. Um, then flatten the, just like tying in the tail or the underwings, I can flatten the stem, except in this case, I'm flattening it in the horizontal way instead of the vertical. I'm just going to give it the slightest crimp. Like this. So that sits just right like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, and I think the crest will flatten itself out a little bit more over time and uh, with a little bit more coaxing. So, pretty satisfied. Um, and, and, you know, you might notice I've left quite a bit of space at the head, and that's because, again, this is getting a dubbed head. And just from a stylistic standpoint, I do like to add a little bit of a lacquered portion in front of any dubbed portion of a head. Um, it's just a nice way to cap off a fly. All right, now it's just the horns for the fly. Uh, let's go over, and that'll be Gloomica. This nice pair of Lumica. Um, 
Uh, and I don't actually think I'm going to need to reverse my thread, but I'm going to tie the away one first. And then the other one. Again, I'm going to wax my thread. Um, you know, I think wax is really important in tying these flies because it helps just hold things in place. So you got your fingers, you know, just trying to keep things from moving around, and you got your fingers going all over the wing. and. And such, and you know, just not having things move. It's kind of nice. All right, so I'm going to wax up the thread. I'm going to dub the head now. Uh, nice large dub, dubbed head. And uh, then this will be done. I'm using mohair because this is just a two out hook. Uh, it's not quite a large hook, so don't need something terribly fluffy. Just like that. thread, uh, which will help prevent the um, using wax thread on your head like that just prevents the uh, head cement from soaking into anything that is like the wing, like the base of the wing or uh, the dubbing in this case uh, because it just provides that layer extra layer of insulation so i'm going to whip finish and there's a tied fly uh, i'm just gonna lacquer or, uh, use a little bit of head cement um this is a uh, Kelson's formula head cement uh, from Bill Bailey. Uh, you should check him out uh, on Instagram uh, at WS Bailey. He also produces um, a lot of the dyed furs that I have. Uh, I think this mohair is from him. Um, I have some pig's bowl from him as well. Uh, produces some really nice stuff. I'll take this out of the place to apply head cement.
And that is finished glue doctor. All right, so I'm gonna cut the stream for the moment. I'm gonna take a quick break. Um, I'll restart the stream with a new stream uh, again because this the stream is pushing an hour and. Uh, I want people to be able to watch these in segments. You know, if you're interested in wings, you can watch the wing segment. Uh, I, I am going to start, uh, hopefully I'll start a new body. Uh, I just got to think about what hooks I'm going to use. Um, start a new body and uh, tie something else. Uh, but I'm going to take about a 10 to 15 minute break uh, here. Uh, and uh, I'll be back. And uh, uh, if you're uh, taken off, um, thanks for watching the stream. Uh, if you want to see more of my work, you can check out my Instagram at justwondering.brad, uh, B-R-A-D. Uh, and if you want to purchase a fly that you've seen on the stream or if you want to support the channel, uh, check out my Etsy shop. It's Studio1213 on Etsy. And... Uh, Thanks for watching. Uh, if you're hanging around, I'll be back in about 10 or 15 minutes. Thanks.